All right, everyone, so here's what we made. We've got our lovely beef cheek, then went ahead and popped them into homemade smoked beef tallow. And if I take a piece of it and I look at it, you can see just how easily this falls apart. Look at all that smoke in there. Mmm, and it tastes fantastic. Anyways, this is the kind of content that you want to go ahead and see. Please go ahead and stay tuned. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitchen Science. Today, we're going to go ahead and make some smoked beef tallow. Stay tuned. All right, for this method, it's pretty simple for us to go ahead and complete. First thing we need to go ahead and do is we need to break down the beef towel. So if you remember a few weeks ago, I went ahead and made a brisket video and I had a pile of brisket sitting right here and a pile of uh, brisket meat scraps sitting right here. And I said that this would be a great project to go ahead and turn into tallow. Well, I listened to what a lot of you said down in the comments and many, many of you want to go ahead and see me turn this into smoked tallow. So I'm going to walk you through that. And along with that smoked beef tallow, we're going to go ahead and make some beef cheeks. I'm going to walk you through how to go ahead and break these down, where to buy them. The greatest thing about this method is anybody can do this. Anybody can buy a brisket, anybody can break it down, anybody can pull out the fat. But this next part is a little more tricky. So what we want to go ahead and do is we want to break this down so that we get the most amount of smoked, beautiful, golden beef tallow fat. All right, everyone, so we're gonna turn the machine on. All right, so as you guys can see, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what we wanna go ahead and get out of our grind. It almost looks like burger meat. So this is gonna render out fantastic. Let's go ahead and push the rest of this through. All right, everyone, for my last little trick, you'll notice I took off the saran wrap a little early so I could let you guys see what it looks like coming down into here. What we wanna do right now is we wanna get the rest of the fat that's sitting inside of here out. It's a little difficult to do, but I've, what I've learned to do is I take the saran wrap that's left over and I make it into a really long piece and I kind of spin it together, almost like it's string. And what happens is I'll start with the thick end and I'll pop that in there and it'll get wrapped around the auger and it'll go ahead and it'll push everything out by the time it gets up to the cutting knife. So all the little bits of fat that are left in here will now come out because of this. So go ahead and watch, this is how it's gonna look. And now all of the plastic wrap, there's none left in here, it's all good. It's all sitting behind the blade. All it did was push everything all the way out. And there it's all sitting right there. And now let's get to the beef cheeks. Let's pat them dry. Pretty interesting pieces of meat. You'll notice that there's a cheek attached to all this other stuff. And all this other stuff is like tendons and fat and silver skin and a bunch of other items mixed together. But when you're cleaning beef cheeks, what you want is you want this interesting part right here. And the rest of this, we end up going uh, putting away. So you find your knife, you cut this off, and then this piece right here, you end up putting it in another pile. But this is not scrap. It's actually used to go ahead and make barbacoa. So we're going to save all of this, and we're going to do, go ahead and do a barbacoa cook at another time. All right, so this is typically what's going to go ahead and come in the package, right? So what we have here is we have two spots on here. So normally when the cheek sits, it sits like this. It has all this extra um, intramolecular fat and tendons and silver skin sitting off of it. So what the USDA butcher will do is it'll do something called the clean cut or, it will, or an inspection cut where it will open it up and it'll take a look at this. And unfortunately, there's this little piece of sinew right here that doesn't have much meat to it. If I cut it off, you can kind of see what I mean in there. There's a little bit, but there's not a ton. So that ends up going in our barbacoa pile. But for the rest of this, we want to go ahead and try to get some of this off so we can find that good meat that we're looking for. And then at that point, we've got this other section sitting over here. We want to go ahead and remove this guy as well, right? And I like to just fold it over and make my cut. And then this is my beef cheek. This is what I want to go ahead and keep. This is that tending sinew that I don't need anymore. So the beef cheek goes in my, my good pile, and the other piece goes in my barbacoa pile. Same thing here. It's a little easier to see. Here's that inspection cut. This is a really, really small one. So if I just separate it for you like so, 
you can see what I mean about these two pieces being connected. And then right here, if I flatten it out, you can actually see this is what the cheek looks like. And that's the inspection piece. A lot of people will just tear at these and pull them apart. To make life easy, I just cut them off. All right, everybody, so here's our beef cheek. You'll notice we got a little bit of silver skin here. We're going to want to take that off. Got a little bit of hard fat sitting over here. We're going to want to take off. A little more silver skin right here that we're going to want to take off. Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to flip this guy over now. Anything that's pretty much hanging off, you want to take off. There's not a lot of cleaning that needs to be done on this uh, silver skin side. Most of the silver skin is going to go ahead and break down, so we're not really too concerned about that. We just want to get rid of all the little straggler pieces. And that's that. So these are pretty decent looking ones. I, I picked these up at Sam's Club. They were $3.98 uh, a pack. Um, definitely something to go ahead and try from them. I'll let you guys know what I actually think when we end up cooking them up. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you this. What I did was I ended up going back through the scrap pile, and I pulled all of this out, and along with that, I pulled out these pieces here. We're going to pop those in today. We're going to let them smoke. You can do this. You can do this all day long. You can pull out the little itty bits of fat, but you'll notice that even when you cut these guys in half, these big chunks in half, there's a little bit of meat there, and then the rest of this is all fat and sinew. All right, everybody, and here is our finished product. So we have our lovely beef cheeks and all of those pieces sitting over here. All those extra pieces I went ahead and pulled out. Over here, we have our barbacoa mix. So if you want to see that cook, if you want to see all that sun, please go ahead and put a comment down below. And if you like what you're seeing so far, please go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you feel the need to and you think it'll be, it'll be good for you in the future, if you like this kind of content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see all the other fun things that we're building on this channel. But for now, let's get back to the cook. We need to go ahead and take our beef cheeks and we need to season them up. So let's go ahead and go to the seasoning montage. One half cup of black pepper, one quarter cup of kosher salt, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of cumin, and two tablespoons of Lowry seasoning salt. And there is our seasoning mix montage. All right, so we're popping our seasoning in here, making sure that it is all mixed up. We're then going to take our pieces and bathe them in here like so, make sure that all sides get covered. And then we're going to go ahead and let this sit and go fire up the egg. All right, everybody, so these are our beef cheeks. They are seasoned and ready to go. We're about to go uh, kick the egg on, but I wanted to walk you through this first. So this piece and this piece are two normal-sized beef cheeks. This piece and this piece over here are a little bit smaller. So in that pack of two that we got from Sam's Club, I got two normal-sized large pieces, kind of a smaller piece right here, and this one I kind of dug out of some other sinew and some other fat. The rest of this is all of the cheek meat that I went ahead and pulled out from those other pieces. So if I wouldn't have done that, all this stuff sitting right here, we would not be putting on the smoker today. So try to remember that when you buy these. While this is a really tasty product and you're going to see how umptuous it actually is from all that marbling and all that collagen and all that fat that's in here, um, you, you probably get something like a 30% yield on it when you're actually breaking it down and you're only going for the cheeks. So at this time right now, I'm probably closer to about a 50% yield with all of the extra time I took to pull these extra pieces out. But enough said, let's go fire up the egg. I'll split. All right, everybody, so we're at 225. We want to push this guy up to 275, but I wanted to show you how this looks first. This is definitely the fullest I have ever had this pit. The entire thing is full. I've got pieces in the back back here. I've got tallow rendering right here. I've got more pieces sitting there. I've got this side's full all right here. So this is probably the fullest I've ever had this guy. This is a large egg. You'll notice it was, it's basically tallow and two packages of beef cheeks, which were about four and a half to five pounds each from Sam's Club. And that's the most I can get on here. As far as the tallow goes, I want to get this as smoky as I can and get it as mixing as I can. I added probably a half a cup of water to this. You do this for a clarification process. Even though there is a lot of fat and water, you want to sort of give it a head start. So you add a little bit of water. That way, as the scum, we call it scum, or the defoulage of the fat, inside of the uh, beef solid chunks we have right here, as they start to come off, they render properly, and then they clarify at the same time. And all of that dirty stuff floats to the top a little bit better, and then it burns off a little bit faster. So your, your fat ends up being a little less cloudy. 
again, it's just a little tip, a little trick, just add a little bit of water and you'll have more of a clarified looking fat. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and check it out. We're sitting at about 300 degrees right now. It has been an hour and a half. Oh yeah, look at these guys. Look at that smoke. By the way, the beef cheeks, they're gonna be hard as a rock. So here we are with temp. Oh yeah, look at that. 176, these are actually good. I can actually pull these. Yeah, 179. So these cheeks are almost ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and let them go up 200 degrees and then we're gonna pull them off. Now these little guys that we have right here, they're obviously, they're above 200, right? You can see that right there, we're looking at 185. That one right there is 182. So they're really, really close. So what we need to do now is we need to mix our fat around in here, start pulling some of it off and start getting some of the rest of it ready to go. All right, everybody. So these guys are temping really, really good. You'll notice that we've got good amount of bark on there. If I flip it over, oh yeah, they look fantastic. They're rock hard, which is really, really normal. So we need to get these guys out and go ahead and get them in the fat which have got rendering right here. So I've already started pulling some of them out. So we're gonna keep pulling these guys out. We're gonna get them into some fat. We're gonna get them back on here and we're gonna to continue to keep rendering. All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and strain some fat into here right now. So I just gave this a quick turn. You'll notice it's still going. It's, it needs to start crisping up like these little pieces right here, but it hasn't yet. All right, so this is about how much fat we want to sit in here. So at this point, we want to go ahead and take this guy. We're going to wrap him in foil. We're going to put him in the toaster oven. We're going to let him go. All right, everyone. And this is our uh, smaller beef cheek pieces sitting in fat, confing away at 200 degrees in our toaster oven. We want to go ahead and put it at 200 because what we want, we want the temp to sit around 185 degrees. All right, everybody. So here is our beef cheeks. They sat on the smoker for about two hours and 15 minutes. I pulled them off at about 204 degrees which you can sort of see clearly right there. So now what we wanted to go ahead and do is we want to finish the process. So as these guys sit right now, they're hard as rocks. I mean, the, all that collagen that's sitting in there basically wants to turn into little rubber bands. So we want to prevent that from occurring. And in order to do that, we need those little rubber bands that are nice and tight to start to relax and start to go ahead and separate a little bit. And then they're going to create these um, crevices where a lot of the water and the fat are gonna sort of leak, uh, leach into. And then like an emulsifier, that collagen is gonna hold on to all of that fat and all that water. And it's gonna give you this umptuous, super tasty, yet extremely tender and sticky bite of barbecue. So in order to do that, we need to go ahead and now do a slow steaming method. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do things a little bit differently. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these guys and we're gonna bury them in here. Look at how lovely that looks. We put our shiny side down in our aluminum foil. All right, everyone, everything is sitting in there right now, and we're gonna go ahead and check on it again in about 24 hours. All right, everyone, it has been a hair over four hours. Here is our remaining tallow. You'll notice it is really, really close to being done. See how there are some white pieces sitting in there and then there's some dark pieces. We need more of the white to be gone. All right, everyone, so here is our bits. This is our smoked tallow. This is exactly what we want it to look like. Right now, we wanna go ahead and strain the bits out first. These bits, throw a little salt on them once they cool off, they go great on salads. If you wanna go ahead and give it a little bit of a beefy, fatty, crunchy zip. All right, so here's our tallow. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and strain it out. I like to pour the fat through the coffee filter. All right, here we go, everybody. See how jiggly this is? See how soft it is? This is what happens when you take a really tough cut that has a lot of collagen in it, and you let it confit overnight at a really low temperature. Oh, would you look at that? See all that juice pumping out of there? My goodness, is that good. This little fat line that's sitting in here, it's like the perfect sauce that can accompany it. It is amazing. This was a two and a half hour smoke. We made some homemade smoked beef tallow. We then went ahead and confited this in that homemade smoked beef tallow. We then let it sit in our toaster oven at 200 degrees for 24 hours. And this is what we got. Look at that, this is amazing. Anyways, if this is the kind of content that you like, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. 
if you like saying anything or asking any questions. If you have any ideas for any future builds, please go ahead and put it down below as well. Have a great barbecue week.